everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Board. We got a really fun video this week because the Wonder Swan Core is now publicly available. And this is a console that I do own as a handheld and I absolutely love it, but I don't own that many games for it because it is quite hard to collect for. So having the Wonder Swan Core on Mr. is absolutely incredible. I'm going to show you guys how to set it up, how to get the BIOS files in, and how to deal with screen orientation as well. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel we got a patreon link down there as well but i am super excited to have the wonder swan core because playing these games on my tv is absolutely incredible and just going over some of the options that we want to deal with you'll see we have an orientation option the wonder swan could be played either horizontally or vertically so some games are going to be misoriented until you go into the menu the other important option is refresh rate. The sync rate on the Wonder Swan was 75 hertz. It's set to 60 here. That'll give you some screen tearing. You can set it to 75 if you can get your monitor, screen, or otherwise to sync to that refresh rate. If you can't just stick to 60, the tearing really isn't that bad. We have so many awesome options for Wonder Swan games. But you'll see here, you want to make sure that you assign your buttons because the Wonder Swan has some really odd inputs, Y2 right, and then you're going to see Y4 left as well. If you don't set your button definitions before you start using the core, some games will not work, mostly the vertical ones because they're expecting different buttons. But you'll see if you load something like Judgment Silver Sword here, the screen is going to be horizontal even though it's a vertical game. It'll give you a little bit of vertical text, but the minute the game actually starts, it's going to be incorrect. Now, if you have a CRT and you want to turn it on its side in Tate mode, 100% do that. A vertical makes it upside down, but vert 180 will orient it in the correct orientation. That way we can play all of the games in their normal configuration. There is an auto option there as well. I just switch it manually because I've noticed every once in a while auto doesn't pick it up. 99% of the time it's going to be perfectly fine, but I just pick it per individual game. And you'll see here that we have the Wonder Swan Core running in vertical or Tate mode and everything looks sounds and feels exactly like it would if you had a Wonder Swan, and obviously it looks much better because the Wonder Swan and Wonder Swan color screens were not the nicest LCD technology when they came out. But we need to deal with BIOS files on the Wonder Swan, and there are two. One BIOS for the Wonder Swan and one for the Wonder Swan color. You just copy those over to your Wonder Swan folder in games. If you don't have the Wonder Swan core, make sure you update. But the Wonder Swan is boot.rom and Wonder Swan color is boot1.rom. If you get those incorrect, it's not going to boot. Just copy the BIOS files to that Wonder Swan folder, rename them. If Windows gives you an error about changing the file extension, just say yes and you're good to go. It's super easy. But you'll see here with those two BIOS files in the core menu, everything is working exactly how it should be. And everything looks absolutely incredible. This is probably my new favorite core just because Wonderswan doesn't have easy options for TV outs. So honestly, playing this in a full scaled resolution on my capture device or on my 4K TV, it looks absolutely outstanding. And it sounds about as good as the Wonderswan ever will sound, which is to say that the sound hardware on that isn't anywhere near as good as something like the Game Boy Advance. So if you hear some noises that just kind of sound a little bit odd, that's mostly the Wonder Swan and really has nothing much to do with the core whatsoever. But Wonder Swan looks incredible and I love the black and white games as well. All the pixel art and the 2D animation just do a really good job of making everything look incredible. And playing this on the Mr. Core is an even bigger treat. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the game here. I'll get it wrong. It's Kurogo, I believe. I'll leave a link to it below so you can read about it but it's an awesome puzzle game kind of a situational spatial awareness puzzle where you have to move around and avoid the enemy and trick him into going into a direction that you can't be hit by him from the Wonder Swan and Color have so many amazing games that you've probably never heard of before, and a lot of them, if you want to collect original cartridges, cost a small fortune. So being able to have all these games on the Wonder Swan core is incredible. Because of all the systems I would say that have been added to Mr., Wonder Swan is one that's probably the least familiar to anybody who's actually going to pick up the device. A lot of the games are in Japanese, but the nice thing is, because there are some translations, and we'll touch on those later, playing the translations on Mr. is even easier. But now we're moving over to One Piece, the fighting game, and you'll see in the intro here, everything that this core is doing for the graphics look outstanding. I don't know the Wonder Swan enough to say if there's a bug here and there. I mean, I played it as a handheld, but I've never fully analyzed it. But everything that's happening as far as the animations are concerned, the colors, the controls, 
seems flawless. I can't find a single instance where I feel like there's a problem with this core, and that's amazing because it's still being worked on, and maybe it will get better, and maybe I've missed something, but I had zero issues whatsoever. And you'll see here, it looks great, it sounds great, everything is really fun, but go ahead and listen to the music for about 30 seconds, and I'll be right back. So yeah, everything sounds as good as the Wonders Wand ever could, and like I mentioned earlier, the Wonders Wand just sometimes doesn't sound that good, but that's just kind of part and parcel of the audio design. But now playing Klonoa, I just love the Wonders Wand in black and white. I mean, the color portions are amazing as well, but this is some of the best black and white 2D pixel art and sprite work that I've ever seen, because obviously the Game Boy original was black and white, but the Wonders Wand was so much more powerful in its black and white iteration before it went color, that it's just a real treat to be able to play something like this in full black and white. And like I said, this looks outstanding. This is absolutely incredible. All of the colors, all of the shading look better than my Wonder Swan ever would because my Wonder Swan and Wonder Swan Color are not modded with new screens. And even with new screens, the image that you're getting on Mr. and HDMI is absolutely outstanding. And I have actually put this on my PVM as well just to check it out. And it also plays incredible on that. A little bit harder for the vertical games. Of course, you got to put the TV on the side. But here with Dai Makiyamura, it's a fun, different version version of the classic ghouls and ghosts formula it's not near as good as the actual console games are concerned but it's still fun to check out and to play around with because anything extra ghouls and ghosts is definitely going to be something that i want to play and you've probably never played this either and with the wonder swan core you're getting all these new and incredible things to check out but like every other ghosts and goblins game it is incredibly hard but you also get a version of guilty gear which is really fun especially for a portable handheld system i love the graphics and how they show up on mister you have those lanterns glowing in the background you have the cats and the dogs in the foreground and all the controls i can barely tell if there's any lag on a wired controller i'm using the switch pro controller for the wonder swan cores wired up via usb and everything feels and responds exactly how i would expect it to and playing a fighting game i was able to pull off input that I remember from the console versions with no issue whatsoever because I've actually never played this version of Guilty Gear on my Wonder Swan because I don't own it. But the fact that I could remember inputs and pull them off on a controller on Mister means that the lag, if it's there, is basically not an issue. And of course, because it was a portable system, you get really smaller games like Puzzle Bobble here, and it just goes to show how much the Wonder Swan progressed as a piece of hardware, because this is the most simplistic looking game. This could easily be something on the original Game Boy, but some of the other you know, black and white 2D games on the Wonder Swan just show how far they push the hardware, like Buffer's Evolution. I've played this before and I'm still really never quite sure what exactly is going on. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog if he was a giant wolf looking dog robot hybrid beast, but it just looks incredible as far as the art's concerned and the Wonder Swan hardware was really pushed hard. And like I said, it looks incredible via HDMI. I put this up on my 4K, I checked it out, everything looked amazing. I would say that as far as the handheld cores are concerned, this is definitely my new favorite one, not just because I'm excited to check out a lot of the stuff that was on the Wonder Swan I haven't played before, but I just think that it makes these graphics look incredible. It's better than playing them on the handheld, and that's an amazing experience to get a handheld core that actually seems to be more fun to play from the couch. But of course, earlier I mentioned there's also a bunch of translations, and that is an awesome thing to have, like the pocket version of Final Fantasy 2 here on the Wonder Swan Color. We can now play it in English when this never actually came out because the Wonder Swan never came to America. Not every single game has a translation, but the ones that you wish did, do. But short of that, that's the Wonder Swan and Wonder Swan Color Core for the Mister. It just recently came out and it's definitely one of my favorite cores that I have played so far. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. I will be back next week with another episode in our Mr. series and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But leave a comment below. Do you own a Wonder Swan? Do you collect forward? Have you checked any of these games up before? And do you plan on playing them on the Mister? Because I feel like this core is going to be the introduction to the hardware. Sure that, thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye bye.